us was able to get on the outside of the building, but they was wrapped around the building because no more, no more can get in. They was wrapped around the balcony. They had another big tent outside, and that couldn't hold the people. So they set chairs on the grounds outside on both sides of the building, and that, that wasn't enough. So we see how one message is doing what God purposed for it to do. It's a blessing. It's a lot of work on us, but it's a blessing. We baptize in that meeting 108 souls in the name of Jesus Christ. So as the work continued to grow abroad, it isn't just here in America, but it's abroad. And they're pulling on us all over, and I'm one person who cannot be every place. I just can't. It frustrates some people, and you would think they would be more understanding. The only one that's every place is God. I can't be, and I, it just can't happen. The work is not just growing strongly here in America, but in every foreign country where the word of God is falling over the airwaves, men and women are coming. Of all races, of all ethnic groups, we are sinning brothers all around the world, baptizing souls. In the name of Jesus Christ, we're sending them. And I'm glad to have so many men. God gave me an army. We have an army of so many ethnic groups. Amen. I'm tired. I'm tired now. <laughs> but uh, it's a lot of work in saving souls and I desire that God well supply us with soldiers. You know, when you have soldiers, you have a different breed of workers. It's true. Soldiers designed for various forms of combat. The word of God says, endure hardness as a good soldier. There are various forms of combat that God's people must prepare themselves yeah. for. Sure. You know when you get ready to walk with the Lord, you have to prepare yourself. That's right. Are you listening? Yeah. That's right. To better understand where I'm driving, Think of it as a relationship, because that's what it is. A relationship between you and God. You know, many people want a relationship, a man and a woman. Yeah. But uh, everybody's not ready for it. That's right. There are many that want to be married. It's a relationship. But everyone is not ready for that relationship. That's right. If one heart is in it and the other heart is not, the one who heart is not going to manifest it. Because they won't be as productive as the one who heart is in it. That's right. When they both heart is in it, they are consistent in giving it trying to get things done. That's right. Trying to bring peace to eliminate all confusion. But when your heart is in that thing, you have to prepare yourself for the unexpected. It's more so when you're serving God. Oh, yes. You have to prepare your soul, prepare your heart, prepare your mind, because all the elements of yourself it's going to be challenged, tested, and don't think it's just going to come from out there. 
is going to come from within the church. And before you start looking at other members of the body, look at yourself. That's great. Are right, you listening? That's great. Right. All right, before we dive into the Bible, let me update you. I've been, got a two-week report here. 11 in headquarters, uh, 4 in Pine Brush, New York, 10 in Bronx, 4 in New Brunswick, New Jersey, 3 in Rocky Mount, 2 in Columbia, South Carolina, 7 in Jackson, Mississippi, 9 in Atlanta, 5 in Orlando, Florida, 6 in Miami, 2 in Tallahassee, 2 in Monroe, 5 in Memphis, 1 in Portland, 1 in Minneapolis, 1 in Detroit, one in Milwaukee, three in North Chicago. Four in Sacramento, three in Los Angeles, one in Las Vegas, five in Houston. International, two in Toronto, three in Italy, five in the Netherlands, one in Dubai, four in St. Lucia, five in Adelian, Australia, six in Johannesburg, South Africa, four in Durban, South Africa, four in Nobia, Africa, and as I said, 108 in Kingston, two-week report, 232 souls baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. It's an exhausting job saving souls. Wherein most people look at how things are growing, but well, where there's a growth in people, there's an acceleration in problems, spiritually or naturally. If you get any company that had 10 employees, and then later on that 10 turned to 1,000, then that's more problems that's brought to the table that perhaps the company didn't have to deal with. But touching the church, the scripture says, the Lord added daily, such as should be saved. I want to work on self preparation today. That's right. Self preparation. That's right. You know, a lot of us are prepared for everything else other than to be saved. And a lot of us are making preparation for everything else, more than we are getting ourselves on God's side. That's true. We are more adamant, more persistent about making plans regarding other things yeah. and other people, uh -huh. more than we are making plans in our personal relationship between ourselves and God. When it comes to other people, sometimes we have to be pushed. And then there's some, their mind is made up. I'm going to talk to him. I'm going to talk to her. There's no procrastinating about it. But touching God and yourself. Many procrastinate moreover. You have to constantly tell them, you need to do this. You need to do that. And they respond as, I know, but if they don't say that. To anything that's carnal, <laughs> fleshy, but touching their soul, which is the most important thing you have here, a lot of procrastination or they put it on hold. I want you to follow me in the Bible. Get this to all of the truth of God followers. I greet all of you. Glad you logged on today. And to you, that's not a follower. My enemies, I'm glad you heathens are back also. You keep listening. And let me say this why it come to mind, because the platform of the truth of God is for the sake of gospel and saving people's souls. You that try to use this platform to advertise your investing in some crypto coins or something. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't over the truth of God advertising money. That's right. 
I don't care nothing about your investings and what you make and what you don't make. You viewers, bear in mind that a lot of people log on just as a distraction to keep you from getting the most important thing, God word in you. But I care about your investment in crypto coins. You and your coins will perish. You don't walk with God. I say to you like Peter said to Simon, your money will perish with you. Money don't save nobody. Get me? It never had and never will. So when you find men or women, whoever they are, logging on, just talking about how much money they made from crypto coins, I don't care if you made a million dollars from kryptonite. <laughs> this platform is for gospel. That's right. For the save men's soul. Not to bring your investments here. In fact, if you want to invest something, invest yourself in God. That's right. Amen. Yeah, I guarantee that's one stock that'll never go down. That's right. You can stick your life on it. All right, let's go to work in the Bible. Let me brief you. Let's have it. In the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, and we'll start at verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord. Hear this. Hear this. Amen. Hear this. Yeah. My son. Right then. Look at the relationship. That's right. He's willing to have with you. My son. My son. If thou come to serve the if, Lord. If. If. Let you know if you get this in mind. And get it in your heart to do it. That's right. If you come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul. Prepare your soul for temptation. Hmm. May the Lord watch between me and thee. <laughs> Why are we absent one from another? In the name of Jesus Christ, well, amen. Amen. You can get a benediction on that scripture right there. That's right. If the word of God says prepare your soul, yeah. yeah. The Bible says the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Right then it's talking about flesh. That's right. Then the Bible said he made Adam without soul. It's talking about spirit. That's right. Because he breathed into that man a spirit, he breathed into that man a soul, then the body inherit the title of what came in it. That's right. And then man became a living soul because the spirit came in man. Yeah. So when the Bible says, do what? If my son. My son. If thou come to serve the Lord. I want everybody to get this. If you come to give God service. Prepare thy Hold soul. It. And the way we give God service, yes. through obedience. That's right. Giving God service is beyond singing and clapping and rocking back and forth and swaying from the left and to the right and hear someone saying and you nod your head. It's more, way more than that. <laughs> service come out of one thing. That's right. Obedience. So the word of God says obedience is better than sacrifice. It's better to obey God because there's a lot of benefits. Amen. And I know from experience there's a lot of benefits in obeying God. A lot of blessings involved. A lot of development. A lot of improvement. Mental stabilizing take place. The emotional growth take place. Physical discipline take place. And spiritual order That's right. falls in place. That's right. Soul encompasses the whole man and the whole woman inside and out. That's right. 
So the word of God says, my son, if thou come to serve my the Lord, children, mm. yeah. that's right. Yeah. My children, Wonderful. my church, Wonderful. my people. That's right. If you come to serve the Lord, to give God some service, prepare thy soul. You have to make preparations with your mind, soul, body, and spirit. That's right. Why? For temptation. Because all of those elements are going to be tempted. That's right. That's right. Yeah. All of it. All of I don't care how much you speak in tongue. The devil speak right next to you. Oh, yeah. You speaking in tongue and shaking. Devil be right next to you looking at you. <laughs> you shake, he shake. He out shake you. She will. You speak in tongue, he'll speak longer than you. <laughs> Louder. Make sure everybody hear it. That's right. But being in the spirit at that time ain't going to help you. No. When it comes time to endure temptation, right. after that we're off. That's right. That's right. Amen. Let us bear in mind John the prophet. Jesus preached John and said, Of them born of a woman, uh, not a greater prophet greater. than John. And John preached Jesus. That's right. One come after me, mightier than I, or stronger than I. Fan is in his hand. He's going to thoroughly purge his floor. Oh, yes. He's going to baptize with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. That's right. John was very strong out there in the wilderness. <laughs> Crying loud, prepare ye to where the Lord make his pathway shriek. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Out in the wilderness, no one to bother him. Mm-hmm. Birds all singing, flowers and <laughs> Beautiful sun and rise and nice sunset. Having a wilderness moment. But now the whole climate changed when he got tossed in jail. And it came to pass. Get me. In the book of St. Matthew, chapter 11, we'll start at verse 1. When he got in jail, he ain't talk about prepare highway for nobody. (laughs) Climate change. Atmosphere change. That's right. Uh, the prison was not a beautiful wilderness scenery. No. Look at the change of mind of the prophet now. Same Why? The me. circumstance changed. Right. Get this. St. Matthew chapter 11, we'll start at verse 1. What is it? And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples, Uh he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Yes. Now when John had heard in the prison. When John heard, no more in the wilderness now. No. No more eating wild locusts and honey. Oh, no. Not that now. No. Different climate, different atmosphere, different diet. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now when John had heard in the prison. That what? The works of Christ. The works of Jesus. He sent two of his disciples. And what happened? And said unto him, art thou he that should come? Wait a minute. This is after John was preaching. Right. He no longer in the wilderness now, but his mind now. (laughs) Trouble. Trouble. You know, you're pretty happy when you're not behind bars. Oh, yes. And everything is going good. Able to eat when you want to. Come and go as you please. Yeah. Sometimes we take peace and comfort for granted. That's right. Wherein the mistake that's made from Millions of God's people. Mm-hmm. When things are going well in your life and your prayers is being answered yeah. and you're spiritually comfortable, mm-hmm. you become careless. That's right. And your servitude towards God. And you become careless so much, so long. Until when something do happen, you're so spiritually out of shape. Right. When you're spiritually out of shape, 
circumstances now cause more damage it's true. to your soul it's true. than it would have caused if you would have been spiritually prepared when things was nice and calm as if things was in an uproar. That's right. In other words, you should not allow your circumstance to change for you to change in your service you render to God. That's right. You should already be prayerful. Yeah. Don't wait for trouble. That's right. Already, thank God, be fasting. Trouble should not be the motivator. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. Already crying out to God for uh, hallelujah. 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 For deliverance and for help. Mm. So Pastor Jenner, suppose I don't feel I need to be delivered from anything, then you're living a life of deception. That's right. Because That's the right. thing you need to be delivered from is yourself. Amen. How you think and how you feel and how you act. So as a result of that climate of calmness and spiritual satisfaction, we have became spiritually out of shape. Out of shape. No more lifting prayers towards heaven. That's right. Which calls our spiritual side to become weak. No, your blessings that God give you is not designed to make you weak. No. They make you weak how you handle them. That's right. God don't bless you for you to get comfortable and lay back. No. God bless you to make you more humble so you can go forward and the things of God so you can get more blessings. That's right. Think of it as being in the military, in war. Whenever you are assigned to take over a certain area because the enemy took it over, mm -hmm. you got to take that hill. You got to take Hamburger Hill back. That's right. You're out there for days, weeks, months. Many are getting killed all around you. Yeah. But your commander said, hold that line. That's right. Bodies are dropping. Sometimes they call in. I need air support. We can't do it right now. Yeah. That's but we lost so many hundreds. Hold that line. Hold the line. That's great. Then your captain come and tell me, have a meeting with you. General said we got to hold that line. But captain, get in your place, private. That's right. Come on. We haven't slept. That's right. Glory to God. Come on, That's right. Don't have no food. No. But what are the orders? Hold that line. Hold that line. Right. So now all the troops. Yeah have to discipline themselves right. to hold that line regardless if they have no water, no food, and no support. So what does that battle do? It either breaks them or makes them. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Now, God come along. Same attitude. Yeah. Hold that line. That's right. He tell us to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And what is the line? He's telling us to hold that plumb line. That's right. Because it's in the midst of the people. That's right. That he's not moving that plumb line. It's straight. Straight. Because he's constructing. He's building a people. And there's no angles. Mm. 
No deviation whatsoever. That's right. That's so right. many of us mm. can handle certain circumstances because when things were smooth, uh -huh. nice, right. happy-go-lucky, yes. we allowed ourselves to get spiritually out of shape. That's right. Not praying as much. Not fasting as much. That's right. Not seeking the Lord as much. Yeah. And the more spiritual shape you be out of shape out you of become, shape. the more carnal minded you become. That's right. So now your approach towards things should be from the advice of God, but instead you take matters in your own hands. And when you do that, you make every situation worse. Amen. Why? Because now you're spiritually out of shape. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. The Holy Book says what? Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ. When John heard in jail the things that Christ done. He sent two of his disciples. He sent two of his followers. And said unto him, Art thou he that should come? Art thou he that should come? Or do we look for another? Ah. Hmm. This is the same, the same John that preached Jesus. That's right. But now I'm in jail. I, I want to do a reevaluation. <laughs> Amen. This is after he baptized Jesus. Oh, yeah. He witnessed the heavens open and the Holy Ghost come in the bodily shape of a dove and lighted upon the Son of Man. That's right. He heard that excellent voice spoke from heaven. This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Yeah. He witnessed all of that. All of it. Right when he's in trouble. Art thou he that should I come? Ain't think about no dove. <laughs> no. <laughs> Never mind. I ain't think about no Jordan. <laughs> no. And I'm not, my mind is not on no voice speaking from heaven or anywhere else. That's right. Do you see yourself in the scripture? Amen. Yeah. That's true. When things are going well in your life, yeah. that's not the time to put this down. Distrust not the fear of the Lord. Do what? In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1 and verse 28. What did it say? Distrust not. Distrust not the fear of the Lord. The fear of God. When thou art poor. When you're poor. And come not unto him. Don't come to him. With a double heart. Don't come to him with an emotional split. That's right. Now, hallelujah. Hear me. You got a double mind. That's right. And you got a double heart. That's right. A double mind brings about a double heart. That's it. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That's right. A double-hearted person is unstable in all their feelings. That's right. Glory yeah. to God. That's right. That's right. God wants us to be one. Amen. Be not an hypocrite. What? Be in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 now at verse 29. When I say when things are going well, don't. Put this down. I'm not talking about the physical book. No. I'm talking about God's agenda, God's will in your life. You know, a lot of time people, they start out working out and then, you know, <laughs> they be like, man, I know I need to work out. All in the mirror looking at yourself. Uh, I need to work out, but I'm tired. Does that sound like some of us? Oh, yes. Amen. Oh, yes. Look at that same concept, touching the development of your soul. That's right. I know I need to pray. I know I need to fast. I know I need to go to church more. I know I need to deny myself, but go ahead. there's always a but. That's right. Why you make excuses? That's right. Then they say, I'm not making an excuse, but when you hear the explanation, it's nothing but an excuse. Amen. Amen. When things are well in your life, let your approach towards God be as if things are miserable in your life. 
That's right. That's what I'm telling you. Keep that mindset. That's right. Fasting. Glory. Hallelujah. Praying. Seeking God. Don't look at how nice things are now. Don't do that. No. Keep the same objective, same goal, same press. Yes, so when things do get out of place in your life, like the thigh of Jacob, yeah. you already have become spiritually conditioned. Yeah. Yeah. Until when that thing get out of place, now you're ready to step up to the plate. That's right. That's true. And you can handle it Wonderful. without Wonderful. it handling you. Amen. Amen. Are you getting the old man? Oh, yeah. Distrust not the fear of the Lord. Distrust not the fear of God. When thou art poor. When you're poor. And come not unto him with a double Don't heart. Don't come to God split emotion. That's why he said, choose ye this day. That's right. Whom you going to serve? And then he says again, no man can serve two masters. You're going to hate one and love the other. Yeah. Yes, you are. Yes, you will. So when you got a double-minded person, you got a person that's double in heart. That's right. And that man or woman is unstable in all their ways mentally and in all their emotions also. That's right. That's why you find some folk in church, out of church. In church, out of church. Be, they, they, they out there in the world for several months, come back to the Lord. Back out there in the world again, come back to the Lord. You know why? Because their heart is split. Heart is split. They are wrestling with two loves. That's right. Loving God and loving the world. Yeah. Yeah. They are wrestling with two minds. Giving a mind to God and giving a mind to the world. That's right. So their body, which is the temple, is split. Split. And God don't want a split house. Oh, no. no, he doesn't. Why? The word of God says a house divided against itself. It can't stand. Not stand. Glory be to God. Amen. When you are divided. Hmm. Want to be world and God. That's right. The spiritual side of yourself ain't going to stand. No. Because somebody's going to pull the other. Oh, yeah. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's yeah. right. Get me. Be not an hypocrite. Who you hear this? Now in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 20. Don't be a faker. In the sight of men. In the sight of men. And take good heed. Pay attention. When thou speakest. Don't be a faker. Don't be a, you say right. you're walking with God, then don't let the world see something else. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's true. Amen. Amen. The world already want to get something on you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're not looking at you struggling. They don't know nothing about that. No. The world ain't looking at you struggling. The world ain't looking at what you're going through. They're looking at what you profess. That's right. They don't care nothing about you weak. All they know, they see that sister going to church with dresses and whatnot, and then come on out with jeans. Yeah. Yeah. All the world looking at you, see that sister wear her hair natural when they come to church, and then got on somebody else's hair from Walgreens when she go to work. That's right. That's all the world looking at. That's it. And in the eyes of men, what did the Bible say? Be not an hypocrite in the sight of men. Well, see that brother, you know, going to work and whatnot with his shorts on and shirt button all down the summer, showing the gray hairs on his chest, yeah. half out there, half naked, cussing and smoking. Yeah. And then see him on the telecast singing, mine, mine, mine. Jesus is mine, mine. That's right. That's true. Well, see you passing reefer around to each other. Then the camera hits your face. They like, Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, man. I guess Bob just bought a bag from him. <laughs> Get me what I'm telling you. Amen. 
I want to take my time and soak it. That's right. Holy Ghost said, Be not an hypocrite. Don't be a hypocrite. In the sight of in men. In the sight of men. And take good heed when thou what thou speakest. Pay attention what come out of your mouth. Exalt not thyself. Yeah. Amen. You see, you build yourself up. Oh, I ain't going to never fall. Mm. With no experience. That's right. I can endure anything. Mm. And you can't take it when someone roll their eyes at you. That's right. That's true. You know, a lot of us are lightweight church people. Yeah. What you mean lightweight? Little kindergarten stuff you yeah. can't endure. Yeah. You can't endure somebody not speaking to you? What's the big deal? That's right. Well, I spoke to them. All right, get over it. They didn't speak to you. Get over it. That's right. That's right. They roll their eyes at me. All right, join the eye rolling club. <laughs> That's right. I extend my hand out, they just looked at me. Then extend the other one out to somebody else. Amen. That little lightweight folly. Lightweight. That's right. That's not even hardness. The Bible says endure hardness. Ha hardness. That's lightweight. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You can't endure foolish, lightweight, childish stuff like that. You know you ain't ready to die for this. No way. You are denied God more than Peter did. Yeah. Peter did it thrice. You may do it three million times to stay alive. That's right. Think of it. You can't take it to someone. You stand your Think arm out there and shake it. Think of it. You speak to him. I want you to hear me good. You speak to him, you didn't get no response. You spoke to them, they roll their eyes. You spoke to them, they look at you like you're from Zombiesville. That's right. They walk right by you, didn't speak. That's right. You're affected by it, all broken up, all angry. Over that trivial kindergarten preschool stuff. Amen. Amen. What would you do if you got to give your head in behalf of this? My Lord, my Lord. You are deny God. That's right. Because if you can't judge a small matter, the word of God says you cannot judge a large. That's right. That's why you hear me pounding on you got to grow in this, wherein the trivial, childish matters don't phase you no more than an ant that's smaller than a mustard seed. Amen. Now, which will bother you more? An ant? The size of a grain of sand mm. or a cockroach the size of a tractor trailer. Mm. Cockroach that big gonna bother me. Oh, yes. <laughs> Do you see where I'm driving? Amen. When a thing is small, then let it be that. Yeah. Small. small. Don't make it bigger than what it is. That's right. Just look at it for what it is. Small, childish, foolish, it's not worth my attention, not worth my time. But instead, we become mentally and emotionally preoccupied. Yeah. And when we become preoccupied in that manner, it's a distraction for what we could be doing, indulging ourselves That's right. in the things of God. That's right. When you come before God. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord. chapter verse again. Back in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 1. I want to teach us how to give God service. Service. When you come. If thou come to serve the Lord. If you come to serve God. Prepare thy soul. You know what? Prepare thy soul. Are you ready? For temptation. Prepare. Oh, a lot of you, you come to serve the Lord, but you ain't ready to be tempted by nothing. Right. That's why when you are tempted and fall in it, you fall apart. Oh, how can I do this? Wait a minute. I, I, I thought I was stronger than the Jolly Green Giant. Wait a minute. But I'm speaking in tongues. Sonoko, 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 <laughs> Sonoko. <laughs> Amen. That's right. Gas station town. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah. What did you do? You overestimated yourself. That's right. That's right. Do you hear the Bible says? My son, if thou come. If you come. To serve the Lord. What you got to do? Prepare thy soul. Many of us came to serve the Lord, but we wasn't prepared for nothing else. That's right. 
That's right. That's right. You just repented, got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, sought the Lord for the Holy Ghost, and made noise. <laughs> it's true. Now prepared Not for prepared. no temptation. That's right. None. That's right. You thought serving God would be a walk in the park. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> huh? God in service and God happy. Snorkel, 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 snorkel. Amen. That's shake, rattle, and roll. <laughs> That's right. Shake, rattle, and roll. Yeah. I ain't prepared to endure not prepared. nothing. That's true. That's true. That's true. The true test of your spiritual walk is endurance. Oh, yes. The manifestation of your strength is when you endure. That's right. The manifestation of your weaknesses is when you endure. Yeah. When something as small as not a handshake or mm. not a, someone didn't speak to you or walk right by you and you, they saw you standing there, when something like that gets you bent out of shape, <laughs> when you just, even if you just get angry over it, you're spiritually out of shape. That's right. Because people walk by you every day. That's right. That's true. When they walk by you, you got your hand out, and they walk by, all right. All right. Go to the next one. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Amen. That's right. Don't be. Wait, 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 wait. Ah, okay, I get you next. Wait, 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 wait. Come on back. Oh. That's not hardness. No. Something as light as that is hardness to you. Something is wrong with you. That's right. You're not spiritually. Uh, you wasn't spiritually exercising yourself. That's right. What do you mean? You got to lift some prayers up prayer. to God and fasting up to God, which will build you up spiritually. And you have to do this when things are nice, right, smooth in your life, not wait. Till your back is against the wall. Then you want to pray out of it. <laughs> That's right. Be already prayerful. Yeah. So when your back do get against the wall, yeah. you can rejoice why it's there. That's right. Remember when Ali was fighting Foreman? He got on the ropes. Oh, yeah. What did he do? He used the ropes to his advantage. Yeah. And you know what he started doing? He called Foreman. That's right. Foreman had no idea that he used the ropes to build up his personal strength. Yeah. He was resting. Foreman was fighting like King Kong. What? Ali was just leaning there. That's right. <laughs> resting. Resting. Spiritual stamina will get you spiritually equipped where even when you face with the problem, you're able to rest on it. Yeah. Are you listening? That's right. What do you mean rest on it? The situation can be tough, yes. but mentally and emotionally and spiritually, you'll remain intact. Amen. Where the situation don't dismantle you. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can lean on it. See the devil coming? Yeah. What am I leaning on? Leaning on God. That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's what I'm leaning on. That's right. I'm leaning on God. Blessed be the name of God. Do you get what I'm talking? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What did the Holy Ghost say here? My son. Church. If thou come to serve if the Lord. If you come to serve God. Prepare thy soul. Prepare. 
Amen. Prepare. How do I prepare? Wonderful. Through knowledge. That's right. When you're on the receiving end of the lessons of God, it's preparing your mind, your heart, your That's body, right. your spirit. That's right. To be tempted. Wisdom raineth down skill. Do you hear this? In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1 and verse 19. What do wisdom bring us? Wisdom raineth down skill. When you get the word of God being preached, skill is being rained upon you. That's yeah. right. That Hallelujah. you may become spiritually talented, mm. spiritually skillful. That's right. Knowing how to handle any situation that comes in your life without that situation drowning you yeah. in life. Mm. I said any situation. That's right. Did you hear what I said? That's right. You name one situation Wonderful. that God can't bring you through. Hallelujah. Name Hallelujah. one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Hallelujah. bringing me through it and bringing me out of it is two different things. That's right. He can bring me through it. I'm still in it. Still in it. But he's with me in such a way I'm not affected while I'm in it. That's right. Bring me out of it. I no longer am dealing with it. Two different things. Amen. Example. The three Hebrew brothers was in fire. He didn't take them out the flame. No. But he took the hurt out the flame. Yes. That's right. While they was there. Yay. While they were there. They were still in the flame. That's right. But the Lord appeared. That's right. And they could no longer feel, they couldn't feel the pain or the pain of the flame. They couldn't feel it. Couldn't feel it. Because he took the hurt out of it. That's right. They was in the trial, but the trial was not in them. Yeah. Are right, you listening? Amen. The Apostle Peter said, thinking that strange concerning the fiery trial, which is just to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But then he stepped in and said, but rejoice. That alone, who rejoices while they're going through a trial? Hallelujah. Amen. Is it possible? Yes. Amen. Because if you've been spiritually working out before the problem came, when it do come, it won't have that intense effect that it normally would have if you wasn't spiritually in shape. That's right. So now, what you got to do, now why you dealing with the matter, singular, or matters, plural, now you got to get in shape. Yeah. Work out. <laughs> Do you hear this? In the book of Philippians chapter 2 and at verse 12. Where what of God says? Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, Yes. Not as in my presence only. By the way. But now much more in my absence. What do we have to do, Williams? Work out. Work out! Your own salvation with fear and trembling. We got some working out to do. Oh, yeah. Some exercising. Exercise. Yeah. I want to say, well, the Lord going to work it out. That's nice, but you got some working out to do. That's right. That's right. You don't want to keep coming to church and you see no spiritual growth in yourself. Yeah. That's right. You keep coming to church, hearing the word of God, and you see no spiritual improvement in yourself, you have no one to blame but you. Amen. Amen. You mean to tell me I can't endure no more now than I could 15 years ago? What mm. in the world I've been doing all these years? Yeah. You mean to tell me I'm, I'm getting upset over the same small, trivial nothing today that I was 20 and 25, 30 years ago? There's no spiritual maturity in you. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? The word of God says, work out your own salvation. Don't worry about nobody else's. Amen. That's right. 
your own. Work out your own. Work out your own salvation. Salvation. With fear. Be fearful. And trembling. And tremble. That's right. What else? For it is God which worketh in you. Hallelujah. It is God that work in you. Both, both to, will to will and to do. What do he want us to do, William? Of his good pleasure. Hallelujah. God, good pleasure tastes bitter. Oh, yes. To the flesh. Oh, yes. But it's good for you. That's right. That's right. I often make the comparison example. When I was a child, my mother used to give all of us castor. Yeah. And olive oil. Yeah. You ever think about something to give you the chills? <laughs> My mother used to give us that olive oil and cast oil. Ah, mm. nasty. Oh, yeah. Now they got it in capsules, more tolerable. <laughs> Keeps the cold out the system. Right. Good for you. Good for you. Then my mother used to give us some medicine. I call it the mark of the beast medicine. Three sixes. Then you had that medicine called Father John. Father John. All that old remedy. Nasty. But it worked. It worked. So the word of the Lord can be painful. Oh, yes. But it works. Oh, yes. Don't wait for things to be comfortable in your natural life before you have to get in the dugout of prayer. That's right. Get in the trenches yeah. while things are peaceful. Get in the trenches when you don't feel the bombs and you don't feel the intense heat from Satan. Get in the trenches anyway. That's right. As if you're in the worst battle under the sun. Amen. So when the battle do take place, you have already conditioned yourself. Yeah. For that war. Right. Are you listening? Hallelujah. Right. Are you getting this? Back in Ecclesiasticus chapter 2 and verse 1. My son, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord. If you come to give God service. Prepare thy soul. You know, Amen. in the old time, when they prepared themselves and made up in their mind to repent, and humble themselves, mm -hmm. it was a common act that when someone had a broken and contrite heart and wanted to humble themselves in the mighty hand of God, they'd take their clothes, That's their right. garment, garments, and they are rent it That's or right. tear it That's right. outwardly. That's right. Which was an example of one humbling themselves. That's right. God don't want you to tear your garment now. In the book of Joel, chapter 2. And we'll start at verse 12. Let me show you what God wants. Start at verse 11, Williams. At, at verse 11. Yes. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. The Lord hmm. shall speak before his army. For his camp is very great. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Ah! Hallelujah. Hmm. That alone give me encouragement. Hallelujah. That lets me know the devil can't whip God. That's right. Hallelujah. His army is very great. Very great. Very great. Uh -huh. For he is strong. He is strong. That executeth his word. That execute his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. What else? And who can abide it? Who can abide it? Therefore also now saith the Lord. Listen at what God advises. us. Turn ye even to me with Turn. all your heart. We back at the heart again. That's yeah. right. That's right. You got a devil heart, that's a problem. That's, that's right. The Lord says, Turn ye even to me with, how much? with all your heart. Nice. Oh. What else? And with fasting. Mm. I want your heart and I want self denial. And with weeping. Wonderful. Mm. Conviction. Yes. And with mourning, mourning, and rend your heart, tear it, and not your garments. Nice. Hallelujah. Nice. Hallelujah. 
Don't wait for circumstances to make you cry. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. You know, love will make tears come to your eyes. That's true. I mean, you ever love someone and just think about how much you love? Yeah. You're like, oh, man. Come on, Jay. That's right. Oh, me, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some folks say, I ain't never loved like that. Just keep, keep living there. Yeah. Let's keep living. That's right. Have you ever thought on God's goodness? Mm. And what you know you are undeserving of. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it bring tears to your eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory right. to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It bring tears to your eyes. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's right. Glory right. be to God. Do you Hallelujah. hear this? And rend your heart. God Hallelujah. wants you to rend your heart. Or tear right. your heart. You know, when you tear material, you huh. broke it. That's right. He's calling for a broken. That's right. A torn and contrite heart. That's right. He wants your heart to be broken. Broken. What do you mean? Humbled. That's right. That stubborn, self-righteous attitude don't fly with God. No, no. No, no. You know, Jesus said, oh, you yeah. have not because you ask not. Ask not. Somebody said, Pastor Jenny, but I did ask, and I still don't have. There's a way to ask. You want something from your parents? You don't come arrogant. Self righteous? No. You come respectfully and with humility. That's right. That's right. So they can do for you. Yeah. When you go before God, Hallelujah. you don't go before God like you somebody. <laughs> no way. When nobody is anybody. That's right. We're less than nothing. Less than nothing. That's Who? Right. Me, you, everybody. Everybody. That God we're less, less than nothing. Even though God made me a preacher, I'm not stupid. <laughs> That's right. I know God can remove me and get another. Yeah. That's, That's right. Bible. Yeah. He said he'd take down one and bring another. Bring another. Right. He said, let, a, let one die and another take his bishopric. That's written. That's written. I'm not a fool. <laughs> That's right. And if I can be replaced and I'm sent. Mm. What in the world thing about you? Your husband can be replaced, your wife, your children. He did it to Job. Yes, he did. Took everything and replaced everything. That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? And rent your heart. Is your heart rent? Is your heart torn? Is your heart broken? That's it's it. broken over some man. Mm. It's broken over some woman. Yeah. It's broken over some money. That's right. Is your heart ever broken over God? That's right. That's right. Yes! You cry over some man, you cry over some girl, you cry because you lost a job, or you cry because you see your soul going to hell? Yeah. That's right. Are you crying because you and the Lord is not as close as you used to be? Yeah. Does that affect you enough to cry? Go ahead. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Do your weakness make you cry? Oh, yes. Do your lack of spiritual cooperation, does it bother you? That's right. Or do you just talk about woulda, coulda, shoulda? That's right. That's right. The church from the Lord Jesus Christ must, in these last days, buckle down. Yeah. And get closer to God than they are to anything else in the world. That's right. That's right. We're about trying to get close to some preacher, close to some church member, close to this, and you better get close to God. God. Amen. He is the only one oh, yes. that'll never fail you. That's right. 
at no time. That's right. Men you get close to die. Women you get close to die. Yeah. But you don't want no gap, no separation between you and God. No. Are you getting me? Yes. And raise that's your why, that's mm -hmm. why we push. Wonderful. To the world. Wonderful. Constantly. Yeah. Put God first. That's right. This is a constant message. Put God first. That's it. Above everything and everybody. Amen. Put God first. That's right. Don't put him first and then snatch him back. Don't put them first when things is nice and good. Put them first. Yeah. Leave them there. That's right. Yeah. And rend your heart. Give chapter and verse. Now in the book of Joel, chapter 2, still at verse 13. Rend your heart. Your heart. And not your garments. Not what? Not your garments. He don't want this torn now. Yeah. He want what this is covering to be torn. Oh, yes. That's right. He wants your heart to be oh, torn. Your heart. He wanted to be broken. Broken. Melted down with scripture. That's right. Are you listening? And rend your heart. Rend your heart. And not your garments. Not your clothes. And turn unto the Lord your God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. While your heart is being torn, torn yes. what direction? Turn unto the Lord. Turn. Turn. To who? Unto the Lord your God. Who are you turning towards? Mm. Who attention are you trying to get? Are you getting what I'm telling? For he is gracious. He is merciful. And merciful. He is gracious. And merciful. God ain't like people. That's right. No, it's not. You make one mistake. People will never let you live it down. That's true. I mean, never. Well, Pastor Jen, and the reason why I keep bringing it up because I didn't do that. You've done something. Something. Yeah. Right. Are you listening? Sure. That's right. Get this. For he is gracious and merciful. He is gracious. And God knows he's merciful. Oh, yes. Slow to anger. You know he ain't like us. <laughs> Amen. I'm glad I serve a God that's not quick tempered. Mm. Slow to anger means he's patient. Oh, yes. He's long suffering. Long suffering. If the Lord was quick-tempered with all his power he had, mm. none of us would be here. That's no. True. That's true. None of it. That's true. Ain't nobody be in this building. That's right. You that are watching, you wouldn't be watching because there won't be nothing to watch. <laughs> That's right. The universe would be gone. Yes. That's right. That's right. But what? Slow to anger. He's tolerant. Amen. He see the world going another direction. He see the human family cussing him, yeah. even denouncing his very existence. That's right. He see atheists is gathering, gathering more and more and more. That's Unbelievers right. saying God is not real, Bible ain't real, the Bible is a myth. Yeah. People log on, I'm so mad with this message, just cuss it out. My Lord. Log on to cuss it out yeah. every time. My Lord. That's the hate that they have towards God. That's right. But God says. Slow to anger. Still, he's slow to cut them off. And of great kindness. What? And of great kindness. He's so kind, kindness. he gives them breath. So they can keep doing what they're doing. <laughs> My Lord. He know he can pull the plug on them whenever he want. <laughs> That's right. God can pull the plug on all of us whenever he want. That's it right. It ain't none of us that close to God. Mm. That's true. Nobody. Nobody. I ain't that close to God that God won't pull the plug on me. Right. I'm not an idiot. <laughs> That's right. I don't have so much knowledge and so much anointing that God made me stupid. No. He buried Moses. He can bury me. Yeah. yeah. Who That's am true. I but dust? That's right. Nice. Wonderful teacher. And I keep that mindset. Yeah. Regardless, the Lord appeared to me on several occasions years ago. I ain't thinking about that when I know he can cut me off. <laughs> no, you're not. Him appearing to me don't stop his sword from coming. No. The only thing that stops his sword from coming my direction is me. Mm -hmm. 
my obedience keep the sword away, away. from it. That's right. What do you mean? Punishment. Yeah. Otherwise than that, the sword of the word cuts me like it cut you. That's right. It cuts me while I'm preaching. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I want to say what? Don't look sharp. Don't be that blind. <laughs> That's right. I'm not above the Bible. The Bible is above me. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. When William reads something and reads something, that thing hit me, I can feel it when it's piercing me. <laughs> but I got to preach it yeah. because I'm not a coward. I don't run from it. That's right. Wonderful, brother. <laughs> Wonderful. That's right. I'm not running from it. Go ahead. It's for my good and for my development. Mm. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter what scripture he go to, if that thing pierced me here, 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 I ain't dodging it. Go ahead, man. Just let it keep piercing me. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Why? It's for my betterment. That's right. Give me the medicine. You mm. might as well ask God to give you the medicine. That's right. You ain't going to get into the kingdom without the medicine. Yep. You got to have the medicine of the scripture. That's right. Mm. My son. My son, back in Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 1. What is it? My son, if thou come to serve you the Lord. You come to serve God. Prepare thy soul for temptation. What else? Set thy heart aright. Set your heart right. Oh, yeah. And constantly endure. Wait a minute. Once in a while. Constantly endure. Right, right. Amen. How often? Constantly endure. <laughs> constantly. Why is something always happening? Constantly endure. That answers your question, don't it? <laughs> That's right. When you endure mm. and go through that, and that's done and over with, Next in line. Next, that's right. That's done and over with. Next in line. That's right. Amen. That's right. I don't ask God to move everything that I face. I don't. I won't say you don't know. I want to feel them many times right there with me. There's many things I don't, I don't want them to just snatch out of my way. No. I want to feel them walking with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to feel them right there with me. Hallelujah. While I'm in it, I want to feel them around. Not pull me out of everything. He gone. Pull me out. You gone. No. You come on down here with me. I'm handling it the best way I can. But I need you to come on in the fire with me. Hallelujah. Walk, hallelujah. Walk with me, sir. Talk with me, sir. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But I don't always ask God to deliver me out of something. I don't always do that. And the reason why I don't, I want to experience the variations of God. Mm. I want to experience God in different forms and in different ways. Why? The reason why I don't ask him to bring me out of everything, but be with me in it, just in case he make the decision not to bring me out of something, I'm already conditioned being in something. Right. Pray in the spirit and pray with understanding. Yeah. Wonderful. Man. Let me make this example. Wonderful. When you got a boxer yeah. who's always used to that round, his matches, lasting no more than one round because he always knocking people out, he's not conditioned. They go five, six, seven, eight rounds yeah. because he's used to everything being done quick, quick. fast, and a hurry so he don't have the stamina right. for long endurance in that fight. Right. Right. 
That's one way how Ali beat Foreman. Yeah. Foreman was used to knocking you out first round. First round. Yeah. So what did Ali do? Tire him out. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Foreman was tired. Yeah. That's true. And while Foreman was hitting him, Ali was saying, "That's all you got, George. Yeah. Your grandmama can hit harder than that." <laughs> what was he doing? Psychologically ruining him. Right. So while you going through things, the devil's talking to your head. That's true. That's true. The devil talking to you while you leaning on God or claim you're leaning. Yeah. That's the, that's the best prayers you can do. Yeah. You yeah. gonna keep believing in God? Yeah. That's true. Oh, you got faith and why the problem's still there. Yeah. It ain't God. It God ain't gonna move nothing. Yep. Wonderful. Man. All right, look at the flip side. If God don't move it, I still know he's able. That's right. And if he choose not to, just give me the strength to endure it. Yes. Amen. That's right. Stop looking for God to knock out your problem as soon as it comes. First round. Yeah. Because if that happened every time in life, how would yeah. you ever know what you're able to endure? The moment something come, boom, it's gone. Thank you, Jesus. Something come again, boom. <laughs> something come again, boom. That's right. And then you get in your mind, God always answers quick for me. God always answers quick for me. But yeah. then God hears it. Mm. Bible says, and the Lord heard. And the Lord heard it. And the Lord heard it. Uh, mm. I said endure. That's right. That's right. I brush out of this, I brush out of that, I brush out of the other. It's time for me to give you another lesson. Yeah. Endurance. Endure. How long, Lord? Long as I please. That's right. That's right. Because I have it written, the trying of your faith. Work with patience. Work with patience. Work with patience. So I'm going to drop something in your life where the trying of your belief in me will test your patience. Yeah. And then see where you allow patience to have perfect her work. perfect work yeah. so you want nothing. That's right. You not only got to read what's written, mm. but this is a book of experience. Yes, it is. And you got to learn to experience what's written. That's true. Before any sword is sharpened, first the iron must be hammered into shape. Yeah. Before you develop and be what God desired for you to be, you first must be hammered into shape. Yeah. The scriptures is called a hammer. That's true. And it must beat us into shape. That's right. Our mind is strong enough like he wanted. Mm. Our heart is emotionally sound until no strange teaching, no false doctrine can come our direction and either spark an emotional curiosity. That's right. That's right. Are you getting me? Set thy heart aright. Do what? Set thy heart aright. Chapter and verse. Back in Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and at verse 2. Set your heart. Set thy heart aright. All right. And constantly endure. Yes. Mm. Constantly. 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 How long is constantly, Pastor Jennings? Don't ask me. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's up to God. That's right. Constantly endure. And make not haste in time of trouble. Amen. Don't get in a hurry when? In time of trouble. That's the mistake that many of us make. Yes. The moment there's trouble, we disagree with something we don't like, something we respond and act too quick, and before you know it, something come out of our mouth. That's true. That should not have came out. Yeah. 
Some came to our mind right. that should not have been there. That's right. Some crept in our heart yeah. that should not be there. That's right. That's right. Oh, the Lord certainly knows what he's talking about. Oh, yeah. Do you hear this? Set thy heart aright. Set your heart. All right. All right. And constantly endure. Constantly. Constantly. Yeah. Endure. Uh -huh. And make not haste in time of trouble. Don't get in a hurry. No. That's right. Taking matters in your own hands. Cleave unto him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do what? Cleave unto him. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed Hallelujah. be God. Cleave. Cleave unto him. You know, when you cleave unto something, you don't want to let it go. Hallelujah. That's what caused Jacob to wrestle to the breaking of day. Hallelujah. 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 And God, he said, I won't let you go Hallelujah. until you bless me. Hallelujah. God knocked the hollow of a style of the joint. Hallelujah. Which lets you know how the Lord will touch something close in your life that will give you pain. Oh, yeah. To test your endurance. That's right. But Jacob held his ground. That's right. I won't let you go. Yeah. Until you bless me. You bless the hollow of Jacob's style was out of joint. Yeah. Angel said, let me go. Let the me day go. breaker. Jacob said, no. no. Come on. Come on. We mean let you go because the day break. Hallelujah. When you truly want something from God, Hallelujah. you'll stop looking at how long you've been waiting Hallelujah. and just wait on God. That's right. Looking at length of time or looking at time at all is a distraction. Yeah. Because if you focus on time, your frustration is going to set in. Yes, it will. And then you're going to say, God should have done something by now. No, 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 no. Who are you to say what God should have done? Right. No, you the one should have done what God say do. That's right. And if you would have done what God say do, perhaps you wouldn't be in this predicament. Yeah. Right. So you're not, you don't have the right to say what God should do. That's no. Right. Now you got to look at what you should do. That's right. Are you hearing this? Cleave unto him. Do what? Cleave unto him. No, feel sorry for yourself. Cleave unto him. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Cleave unto him. If I can rewind the clock. Cleave unto him. None of that talk don't mean nothing. No. No, it don't. This is what God wants you to do now. Who? Everybody. Cleave unto him. God wants you to learn to cleave to him because he is the remedy for all problems. Yeah. Yeah. God is. God is. Do what? Cleave unto him and depart not away. Mm. Hallelujah. When you cleave to him, Hallelujah. you find yourself gripping him. Hallelujah. How do I grip the Lord? Fasting. Yeah. Praying. But you already want to be doing this before any disruption in your life. That's right. You already want to have that practice. That's right. Now wait till something happens. Yeah. This is why God allows things to happen. That's right. Because we got too comfortable. That's right. Too easy. Too easy. Too spoiled. That's true. Yeah. So the word of God says, woe unto them. That are ease in Zion. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Holy Ghost says, cleave unto him. Cleave unto him. And depart not away. Don't leave him. That thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Wait a minute. If you cleave to him. Hallelujah. And don't depart away. That thou mayest be increased. You're, you'll find yourself stronger. At thy last end. At your end. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Nice day. You'll find yourself at the end of that situation. Stronger than you was. That's yes. right. Than the beginning. That's right. That Bible? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. That's Samson's end. Mm. 
He, he, he got between them columns oh, yeah. and killed more at his end, at his end than the whole time he was living. That's right. His victory was greater. That's right. But look at what Samson had to endure. Yeah. Lose his strength. Blindness. Subject himself to deception. Uh -huh. yeah. Couldn't see his surroundings. Right. Mm. Had the devil keep clawing on him, getting him to tell his heart. Yeah. That's right. Where are your strength at? Well, if this happened, it is. where are your strength at? If this happened, where are your strength? Kept, 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 yep. kept railing him, kept leaning on him. Yeah. Yeah. Until he gave up the goods. That's right. Amen. She came as a lover, a friend. Uh -huh. Yeah. Took his strength. That's right. Give me the book of Judges, if I'm correct. When Samson came to himself, he started talking to God. Yeah. <laughs> Lord! That's right. I want my strength back. That's right. I want my strength back now. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Listen at this. In the book of Judges, chapter 16. Real quick. I'm going to start at verse 27. All right. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there. Yes. And there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women. Yes. That beheld while Samson made sport. And Samson called unto the Lord. Glory to God. Nice. This Hallelujah. is Samson at his weakest point. That's right. In his entire life. That's right. This was his lowest point. Amen. This was his weakest point. Yeah. Get chapter and verse. Judges chapter 16. Now we're at verse 28. Go and to verse 20. At verse 20. Yeah, man. And she said, the Phil we'll start at verse 16. All right. Judges chapter 16 and verse 16. Get this. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words. This is what the devil do. He constantly at you. Constantly, constantly. at you. With words. With whether words. they be in mind or whether they be in your heart. That's right. He's consistent. One okay. thing I say about the devil, he don't take breaks. No. We do. That's right. And this is when, when, when we take a break, that's a doorway. Yeah. That's right. him to come right after you, full force. Listen closely. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words. Yes. And urged him. What? And urged him. Urged him. So that his soul was vexed unto his death. His soul was vexed to death. That he told her all his heart. Now, nah, what you mean? She made him a fool. Yeah. Because the Bible said a fool tell all his heart. All his heart. Yeah. And a fool is known by the multitude of words. That's right. Listen. That he told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head. For I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. All she wanted to know is how can I take your strength? That's all she wanted. That's all. That's, right. That's all. That's all. She ain't have his interest at heart. She had her interest at heart. That's right. That's true. That's where some people are. Just try to find different methods. How can they get close to you? Yeah. Yeah. See, how can they bring you down to their level? Make a fool out of you. That's right. That's right. Everybody ain't got your interest at heart. No. There's some do. Yeah. Won't be that many, though. That's right. That's right. Listen. There hath not come a razor upon mine head. Yes. For I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. I've been separated to God since I was born. Before I was born, I was separated That's from right. my mother's womb. Yes. If I be shaven. If I get my hair cut. Then my strength will go from me. I'm glad God don't have the strength in the hair of man now. We would be in trouble, Pastor. Yes, we will. We would really be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, all of all, uh, us, 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 us hustle of your head <laughs> cut men right. and bald head, brother, we won't have a chance. No. Thank God, because now it's a shame for a man to have long hair. That's right. We have to get our strength cut all the time. That's right. All right. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me. Yes. And I shall become weak and be like any other man. I let you know he was not like any other man. No. Right. 
But in the midst of him not being like any other man, it goes to show you he had one thing in common like any other man, flesh. Yeah. And the That's Bible right. says he was not like any other man was because his physical strength that God gave him. Right. The ability of his physical strength exceeds other men. Yeah. Otherwise, in that, he was a human being, right. a human. born of a woman, talking to a woman, <laughs> and right. a woman talking to him. Yeah. To drain them dry. That's right. That's true. Mm -hmm. All right. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart. Yeah. She sent and called for the lords of the Philistines. Then what? Saying, come up this once, for he had showed me. I got him. All his heart. Uh -oh. I got him where I want. That's yes. Right. Then the lords of the Philistines came up under her and brought money in their hand. And she made him sleep upon her knees. Hmm. He go from himself. beating up folks with the jawbone of her ass to laying on her knees. knees. Yeah. Lap sleeper. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Made That's up right. like a baby. Come on. Just laying there. Just laying there. <laughs> Come on. Amen. Oh, how the devil can really change you for the worse. Yes, he will. Get me. And yeah. she made him sleep upon her knees. And what? And she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. Mm -hmm. She always got someone working with her. Yeah. That's right. To destroy you. Yeah. All right. And she began to, uh, and she began to afflict him. Wait a minute. Hmm. Convince him to tell all her heart. Yeah. He's laying on her knees. She called her henchmen to cut the seven locks of his hair off. That's right. And then the real her came out. And what did she do? And she began to afflict him. No more lovey-dovey. No. That's the real Delilah right yeah. there. Right, right there. That's, right. That's, That's right. the real Delilah. That's right. An afflictor of pain. Yeah. And misery. Uh-huh. Get this. And his strength went from him. Strength was gone. And she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. Mocking him. Yeah. Philistine's yeah. coming to get you now, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep. And what? And said, I will go out as at other times before. Then and, what? And shake myself. I must shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. He thought, and I want you to pay attention to what I'm about to tell you, you that are watching also. Samson thought that he can deal with his enemy. Uh -huh. Yeah. Same way he dealt with them before. That's right. He had no clue That's right. that his strength was gone no. yeah. until it came time for him to be face to face with the enemy. That's right. Listen closely. And she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. Samson. <clears throat> the fact that he, she, he was asleep. Right. Yeah. He didn't even know he got a haircut. She made him sleep upon her knees. Now I'm going to wake him up. Your enemy coming. The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. Yeah. And he awoke out of his sleep. And what? And said, I will go out oh, as other times before. I'm confident in it. I take care of them. And shake myself. Like I've done before, I shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. Wait a minute. Something, something, something is wrong with my, rela my relationship between me and God. Whoa. That's right. I don't feel God like I used to. Uh -huh. That's right. I don't feel the presence of the Lord yeah. like I used to. That's so right. therefore, now I'm incompetent. That's right. In handling my enemies like I used to. Yeah. Because I put confidence in the wrong place. I surrendered my heart the wrong way. Right. I became comfortable the wrong way. Right. And now I lost out with God. That's yeah. right. And now I'm empty. That's right. No strength. No strength. No power. No. no soundness. The 
that sound like some of us? Yes. Don't narrow it down to a woman doing this to you. Anything can do this to you. That's right. That's right. Just so happened in Samson's case, it was a woman. Right. But there are many other things that have crept in the lives of many that have choked the word. Choked the word. Over to God and we became unfruitful, non-productive. That's right. Are you getting this lesson today? Amen. Amen. You have to prepare yourself. Okay. Listen at this. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes. What? But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes. We don't want him to see nothing. That's right. See too much. Yeah. No oversight. We don't want that. That's right. When he had the strength of God, he was able to see plenty. That's right. And now we brought him down to our level, weak. We, frail and foolish. Yeah. Now we can handle his vision the way we want. That's right. Let's just put his eyes out. Put his eyes. Yeah. Amen. Viewers, that's what have happened to many of your pastors. That's right. Yeah. They have gotten comfortable laying on the knees of prosperity. Mm. Come on, God. Go ahead. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. Lost their power. Lost their vision. Yeah. No longer see the value of the souls of nobody. That's right. They laying on the knees of money. Yeah. The knees of prosperity. Go ahead. Man. Laying on the knees of notoriety. That's right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The devil put their eyes, eyes out, out and no longer had the oversight over the people. That's right. The Bible said they overpassed the deeds of the wicked. That's right. Just like Samson laid on Delilah's knees, you preachers are laying on money, yeah. yes. fame, That's true. notoriety, and on the knees of several folk. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You ain't only laying on Delilah's knees, you're laying on some man's knees. Mm. Go ahead. Laying on the knees of politicians. That's true. Laying on the knees of a government program so you don't speak out against the government because you want them surpluses. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Don't narrow it down to him laying on the knees of a woman. No. Laying on the knees of the woman represent he got comfortable in the wrong place with the wrong one. Yeah. That's right. And as a result of such, he lost his eyes. That's yeah. right. He lost his strength first in his eyes. In his eyes. Right. Many of you preachers out there, you're laying on the lap of money, prosperity, notoriety, fame, Democrats, Republicans, meaning you're mingling with the wrong ones. Right. That's right. Now do you see the broader picture? Oh, yeah. That's right. As a result of such, lost your power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Lost your vision. Lost, lost it. Don't have no insight, no foresight. And that's why the people can't be led into the kingdom of God no more. That's right. Laying on the lap of money. Yeah. God is not preached. Because you can have money and still preach God the right way. The right way. All, right. all God got to do is have your heart, stay in your place. God bless you, and you still got money and preach like you don't have a dime. That's right. Don't tell me you can't. Abraham did. That's yeah. right. Job did. Yeah, yeah they did. Jacob did. That's oh, yeah. And had plenty. Oh, yes. But they stood for God like they didn't have nothing. Hallelujah. Mm. Like they didn't have a thing. That's right. Hallelujah. All it takes, keep your strength. Keep your vision. Uh -huh. And if you want to lay on somebody's lap, let it be the lap of God. That's right. Are you listening to the old man? Yes. Hallelujah. Hear this. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes. Read that again. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes. The enemy put his eyes out. And brought him down to Gaza. Brought him down to Gaza. And bound him with bound fetters of brass. With, with what? 
fetters, fetters of, brass. of brass. And he did grind in the prison house. Had him working. Working. Made a servant out of him. That's right. Made him a servant. Yeah. That's right. Had him down there like a slave, like anybody else. And brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters bound of with brass. Feathers of brass. And he did grind in the grind prison house. Grind in the prison house. How be it? How be it? The hair of his head began to grow again ah. after he was shaven. Yeah. Hallelujah. Strength. Slowly but surely, start to come back. That's right. In the most unlikely hour. That's right. Reduced to a slave. But it's here. Start to come back. That's yeah. right. Go with the God. That lets you know all hope is not gone. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Listen. Then the lords of the Philistines gathered them together. The lords of the Philistines gathered them together. For to offer a great sacrifice unto Dagon, their God. Yes. And to rejoice. Yes. For they said, our God hath delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hands. Do you see that? Now they begin to praise their idol. Their idol. And said that their idol, the idol God, hath delivered hath Samson, delivered our, Samson enemy, our enemy, into our into hands. Into our hands. Now you know God himself ain't going to tolerate that. <laughs> no, oh no. Oh, no. Now you're rubbing God the wrong way. <laughs> That's right. Come on, Jay. The Lord said, Thou shalt have no other God before me. Yeah. For I, the Lord, thank God, is a jealous God. That's yeah. right. And now you're going to brag about some idol? That's right. Well, I got to do something about this Come here. On. Amen. And, and when the people saw him. When the people saw him. They praised their God. Oh. Praise their God. Now that provokes God. Oh, That's God. right. That's right. You praise anything else other than the Lord of heaven. Now you're provoking him to anger. That's, That's right. right. All right. For they said, our God hath delivered into our hands our enemy. Yes. And the destroyer of our country. And it wasn't their God done anything. No. It was yes. Samson disobedience. That's right. Their God didn't do nothing. Oh, no. no. Samson disobedience. That's right. Placed him in the hands of his enemy. Yes. That's right. Hear this. For they said, our God hath delivered into our hands our enemy. Yes. And the destroyer of our country, which slew many of us. Yes. And it came to pass when their hearts were merry. When their hearts was happy. That they said, call for Samson. Get Samson. That he may make a sport. Not that they play sport. No. No. This script is what many use and say to send to play sports. It's not talking about playing sports. No. Right. No. It ain't talking about football, basketball, yeah. hockey, no. soccer, no. baseball, wiffle ball, half ball, <laughs> softball. <laughs> ain't talking about that. No. Listen, that's the language of the book. And it came to pass when their hearts were merry. When their heart was happy. That they said, call for Samson. Call for Samson. That he may make a sport. That he may make a sport. That's Not right. that, he, that we may play a sport. No. What do you mean make a sport? Make mockery of him. That's right. We're going to get him to entertain us. That's it. Make mockery of him. That's it. Make fun of him. Right. That's what it's talking about. Making fun. That's it. Now we're going to see, can he shoot a three-pointer? No. That's right. No. We'll see how good his left hook is. They ain't talking about that kind of sport. Right. No. no. I want it to be good because many apostolics use that to condemn sports. Mm-hmm. Mm. You see, knowledge is power. Yes, it is. Get the language of the Bible. And it came to pass when their hearts were merry. When their heart was happy. That they said, call for Samson. Call for Samson. That he may make a sport. That he may make a sport. We want to mock him. We want to have fun with him. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Tease him. Right. Yeah. Get me. And they called for Samson out of the prison house. And what? And he made them sport. And he they made them sport. Mm -hmm. Made fun of him. That's right. Yeah. And, and they set him between the pillars. Oh. Uh, eyes is out. Right. No strength. No strength. Set him between the pillars. And Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand. What? Suffer me that I may feel the pillars. I want to feel them. Whereupon the house standeth. Just put me in the right place. That I may lean upon them. 
Put me in the right place. I want, I want, I want to get between the right pillars, <laughs> between right. the right columns. That's right. I got something in mind. <laughs> That's right. Amen. 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 Lad, don't you worry about what I got in mind. You just lead me to the right place. That's it. And put me there. That's oh, it. God is so good. Amen. Hear this. Now the house was full of men and women. And what? And all the lords of the Philistines were there. Right then, I let you know God don't have no respect to person. Right. Full of men and women, mm -hmm. and the lords or the rulers of the Philistines was there. And there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women. Yes. That beheld while Samson made sport. Yes. And Samson called unto the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Come on, Hallelujah. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everything, glory to God, points back. To yes. calling upon God. That's oh, right. Yes. Prepare your heart. Prepare your heart. Uh -huh. To reach out unto him and believe it. That's right. right. Ain't no need talking to God and you don't believe in him. No. He that come to God must believe that he is. Oh, yes. That's right. Samson was talking to God and he believed him. And Samson called unto the Lord. And what? And said, Oh Lord God, remember me. Ha. Hallelujah. God, glory. Hallelujah. Lord, oh Lord God, remember thee. Remember, I pray thee. I pray thee. And strengthen me, I pray thee. I strengthen me, I pray thee. Only this once, oh God. Give Hallelujah. me another chance. Come That's on. it. Come on, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Give me another chance. Yeah. Only this once, oh God. Just this one. Right now, Samson's ready to die for take. That's right. If you don't help me no more after this, that's all right. But all right. this one time. This once. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This one time yeah. prove to these folk yeah. who you are. Go with take up. Hallelujah. Right. Prove to them. That's it. That's it. If this is my last prayer and I got to die here, so be it. Yeah. So be it. But before hallelujah, on, I die, you got to prove yourself here. That's right. What did he say? And strengthen me, I pray thee. Strengthen me. Only this once, O oh God. I pray thee, just as once. That I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. That you pay the Philistines back. For my two eyes. For putting my eyes out. Yes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood. And what? And on which it was borne up. Then what? Of the one with his right hand and of the other, other with his left. left. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. Come on, Come on. Hallelujah. You know, you know, Balaam said to Balak, let me die the death of the righteous. Yes. And let my last end be like his. That's right. You know, when you feel like you're at death's door, Hallelujah. your attitude about prayer yeah. and God, if you're sincere, oh, yeah. will be different from someone that's full of life. That's true. That's true. Pray to God Hallelujah. and seek the Lord yeah. like it's your last. Yeah. Are oh, you listening to what I'm telling you? Oh, Hallelujah. Yeah. Who, everybody? Everybody. Pour your heart, your soul, your mind, your spirit out in the hands of God. That's right. Because it might be your last. Yeah. You may get on your knees. But he may let you stay there. That's true. That's true. That's true. Let my last end, the prophet says, be like his. That's oh, right. Yes. Oh, yes. Listen. And Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. And what? And the house fell upon the lords. The house fell upon the rulers. And upon all the people that were therein. And what? So that the dead which he slew at his death. What was it, William? Were more than they which he slew in his life. Do you see the victory? Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Do you see the victory that God gave him? Hallelujah. Mm. 
You have to go before God like it's your last. That's right. Even when you're seeking the Lord for the Holy Ghost. That's right. Don't go like it is a tomorrow. That's true. Because even though it may be one, that doesn't mean it may be one for you. Yeah. That's true. He that hunger and thirst after the wreck in the shell to be filled. Yeah. The Bible says, my son. Back in Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 1. What is it? My son, if thou come to serve the Lord. If you come to give God service. Yes. Prepare thy soul. Get your soul prepared. For temptation. Now, let me close out with Corinthians. Uh -huh. I believe 13th chapter, verse 10, if I'm not mistaken. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and at verse 10. Let me see if that's what I want. But when that which is perfect is come. There's no temptation taking you. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, the other way 1 around. 1 Corinthians Try chapter that. 10. All right. Verse 13. What is it? There has no temptation taken you. Let this one of those hard scriptures to swallow at yeah. times. Yes, it is. There's no temptation taking you but such as is common to man. What you mean is common to man? Somebody going through the same thing. Yeah. yeah. You can't think of one thing you ever experienced where thousands, if not millions, is going through the identical thing, if not worse. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm dying. You feel like you're in it by yourself, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. But you're not. Oh, yes. Right. The person sitting right next to you can be going through the same thing and you would never know it. That's, That's true. true. That's true. Right next to you. The one that you're on the phone talking to. That's true. The one that walked by you when you shook, wanted to shake their hand and you complaining. Yeah. Yeah. They mind is so focused on what they're dealing with, don't even notice you. That's right. That's right. Glory to God. Amen. Do you hear me? There is no temptation taking you. The Bible said there is no temptation taking you but such. As is common to man. Which is common. 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 Mm. Just as common to man. But, but, who's, but who's there? But God is faithful. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost said. Yeah. God, but God, God is faithful. Is faithful. Who will now not listen. suffer you. Will not suffer you to be tempted above be that tempted you are able. Above that which you are able, but will, but with, will the temptation, with the temptation also make a way to escape. Why? That ye may be able to bear it. Nice. 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 There's nothing that will come in your life. Hallelujah. That with the help of God that you won't be able to bear. That's the right. Bible says it, it says and it. I believe it. Yeah. It says it. Sometimes you don't know how strong you are until certain experiences come in your life. That's true. Those experiences sometimes test every element of your strength. Yeah. Sometimes you are surprised at yourself. Wow. I... <laughs> That's right. I, I, I didn't think I could handle it like this. That's right. That's true. God is with you. You don't even know it or see it. That's you don't right. have to be speaking in tongues or shaking for God to be with you. That's right. Some folks say, Pastor Jennings, I want to feel the spirit when you preach like other folk. What is your definition of feeling the spirit? Yeah. Speaking in tongue and shaking only? That's not the only way to fill the Spirit of God. That's right. That's right. Jesus was teaching the apostles, said, Did not our heart burn? Yeah. Glory to God while he spake with us. Yeah. That's right. My tongue ain't moving, my body ain't shaking, but brother, that thing is working on my heart. Hallelujah. Working on my heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Working in there. Thank God, Spirit is dealing with me. Wonderful. Get your heart prepared. That's yeah. it. Get it prepared for temptation of every kind. Yeah. Every sort. Yeah. Don't build yourself up higher than what you are. That's right. Know God, know the devil, and know yourself. Yeah. Are you getting me? Amen. Yeah. The objective of Satan is plain and simple. It's 
cause you to go to hell with him. That's it. That's it. Regardless of what you face or experience, the objective of Satan is that you be lost. Yeah. Being lost is a decision of yours. That's like going to a party when you went. You decide to go. Decided to go. Now you want to walk with God? Who made that decision? You did. You did. No one put a gun to your head. That's right. Jesus said, whosoever will, let him come. Let him come. Remember what the word of God says. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord. Prepare. If you come mm -hmm. to give God service. Uh -huh. Prepare thy soul for temptation. Get ready to be tempted. To be tempted. Uh -huh. Set thy heart aright. Set your heart right. And constantly endure. Constantly endure. And make not haste in time of trouble. Don't get in the heaven when you're no. in trouble. Cleave unto him. Cleave to God. And depart not away. Don't you leave him. That thou mayest be increased at thy last end. That's good, isn't it? That's good. Nice. Amen. You that have not repented of your sins, God wants you to get ready to prepare your heart. That's right. Repent of your sins. Be yeah. sorry about your wickedness. Yeah. Be baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of the false religion, false church you're in. Yeah. Been there too long. Yeah. Preacher took your money just so you can die and go to hell afterwards. That's true. Yeah. Been there too long. Oh, yes. Anybody want to get right with God? They have prepared themselves. They want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand on your feet if you want it today. Wonderful. 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 You that are standing, follow that brother right there. Follow that brother right there. That's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Hallelujah. We done ran the streets too long. Yeah. Been out there in the world too long. Yeah. Smoking, partying, drinking. Wearing your mini skirts and your splits everywhere. And shaking your half naked, dislocated hips. Shaking the fake ones and the real ones. Amen. Ha. I thought of my oldest brother, Tony. Tony is so comical. Years ago, when I was little, he came home from a party, cutting up. He said, man, I was at a party dancing with this girl. <laughs> and next thing I know, her hip slid down. <laughs> My Lord. They were shaking her hips so hard, her hip slid down. My Lord. He said, I told her your hips is falling. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Glory to God. What? <laughs> Whether well, your right. hips is real or fake. That's right. You better take them things to the water. Yeah. You're ready to get baptized. Oh. Use them for life rafts. Oh. <laughs> yeah. right. Get your soul right, human yeah. family. That's it. Make your preparations to meet God. You atheists out there? Yeah. Your unbelief. You can believe the sun. Do not rise or set. Notice your unbelief. Do not change the activity of the heavens. No. God is still God. That's true. That's right. And your unbelief won't stop him from being God. That's right. All right. May God keep you. May God preserve you. God give us all something good. Come on back at 5 o'clock to my traveling department. I want to meet with you today at 4 o'clock, my overseas travel department, 4 o'clock, and my conference room, please. Let us all stand. Elder Williams will close us out in prayer. Father God, we do come to you once again in the name of Jesus Christ. We want to thank you and praise you again for your word. 
We thank you, Father God, for the man of God. We thank you how you preach through him. My God, we thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to hear the truth of thine gospel. Now bless us and help us not only to be hearers, but bless us to be doers of the scriptures. My God, we thank you, Lord, for everything that you've been to us and for, for all that you've done for us. My God, remember those as yet waiting for the Holy Ghost. Bless them that they may continue to call upon your name. Help them to be obedient unto thee. My God, that they may be filled with thine spirit. My God, strengthen the man of God. Continue to bless him and protect him and help him. My God, we thank you for everything that you've been to us and for all that you are toward us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.